Namaste, everybody. How's everybody doing today? How are you guys doing? We have a lot. We have a hot topic because, you know, today I was going to pick out some news story that was in the travel. Um, and I uh, got like, I don't know. I mean, I'm on a bunch of email lists. So I get a bunch of emails, just, you know, suppliers and different people. And it was like two or three emails back to back that was like, you know, since travel is opening, let's do this. You know, since travel is back opening, let's do this. And then like, you know, subsequently later, I look down and I, you know, see in my news feed, COVID has risen and all these different countries. And I'm like, how is travel open? But the reality is, is people are traveling, right? There are people who are going places. I even looked at an airline ticket myself to go someplace with my daughter. And, you know, we are starting to get out there. And then I thought to myself, goodness, is everybody else ready? Like, is everybody really ready to be back to business? And, you know, a lot of you guys said you were, but I'm going to challenge that. So today we're going to talk about that. These are the things that I talk to a lot of you guys throughout the week. Throughout, uh, I talk to a lot of travel potentials excuse me, or existing travel agents throughout the week. So these are the things that people are telling me that they're working on. One, website, check, right? Lots of people telling me they're working on their website. They're redesigning their website. They're rebranding their website. They've got website on the brain, right? You know, they've got some down websites. I probably get everybody and their mother is telling me that they're working on their website, right? Right? I got somebody who told me that they've been passing out business cards and they've got business cards. Right. I see a lot of ones. Right. So lots of people working on websites. Lots of people got business cards. Lots of people decided on host agencies. So people are telling me I am thinking about launching a business and I am deciding on my host agency or I'm sick of my host agency and I have moved it to a new host agency. Right. All right, I got people telling me that they're working on packages, right? They're ready. They've got packages ready and they're ready to drop in any minute. And these are the things that people tell me that they're working on that says that they are ready to open their doors and start making the cash, right? Lots of ones, lots of ones. You know, I could probably go on with a whole bunch of other list of items that tell me that you are ready for business and you are open, right? right? You guys are working hard. Oh, there's one other one, packages, right? The other one was supplier training. So many people tell me that they are taking supplier training. Boom, they're taking so much supplier training. They're educating themselves and they are ready and rocking to go. They are, they, like everybody just believes that these are the things that they should be working on. And you know, they very well may be with the things that, they, that you should be working on. But today we're going to talk about some other things in addition to that that you may be needing to work on in order to really be ready to reopen or open the doors of your travel business. But before we get started, I wanna introduce myself because I know that there's a lot of new faces and names, no faces, I guess there are no faces, but there are a lot of new names on this broadcast and a lot of familiar names on the broadcast. So thank you for joining me live. My name is Sunday Gardner. I am your online travel boss and I come to you here every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. talking all things launching, marketing, and operating a profitable and successful travel business. All right, are you guys excited to get dive in and to really ascertain, that's one of my favorite words, ascertain, really ready to dig in and figure out if you're really ready to open your doors post or during, because right, some people are opening the doors during COVID, during are you just ready? Like, tell me that you're ready. It's like, are you excited? Are you guys ready to do this, right? So you may think that you're ready, but after today's conversation, you will be ready, right? <laughs> that's that's my goal. So if you think you're ready and I uh, bust your bubble today, you will be ready after this conversation. That is my goal today. So today, what we're going to talk about are three things that people are focusing on that may not necessarily mean that they're ready, but I'm going to really talk to you about the truths of what you should be doing in this downtime of your business, okay? Ready like Freddy, hopefully not Freddy Krueger. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, 
right, so number one thing that people tell me that they are ready and focusing on during this downtime is they're focusing on their website. I want to say probably nine out of ten people I've talked to have told me that they're working on their website. And the reality is, is just because you are focused on your website does not mean that you have a plan for marketing your travel business. Your website does not mean that you are market ready, that you have all that you need to really have a market presence in this world or even on the internet. And let me tell you why that is, right? You build it, you're going to spend, many of you are spending thousands of dollars, hundreds of dollars on a website, right? Maybe even not hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, but you're spending an enormous amount of time building this website, right? You're trying to get all the perfect pictures. You went out and you got all dolled up and you got your photo shoot and you are ready with this website. But the reality is if you are not driving traffic to it, no one is going to see it, right? So just because you build it doesn't mean that they will come right? Because that's what you need to fix. If you believe that because you built a website and when you tell me that you're not good at marketing, but you're working on your website, that's a problem, right? So let's talk about what does traffic strategy mean, right? Literally, I, you know, I was trying to think of a really good analogy, right? There's probably a website born as many as there are bunnies. Now, if you guys know anything about rabbits, I don't know a lot about rabbits, but I know they have a lot of sex and they have a lot of babies, right? So there's a rabbit born like every minute of the day, right? That's just the amount of websites that get dropped every single day, right, to crickets. And they don't get any traffic and nobody is looking at their website, right? Or worse yet, you spent all of this time on a website, right? And it doesn't do the one job that your website is supposed to do, which is to get the email address, get the contact information, of the person that visits because 90% of the people that go to your website are not ready to buy. They're going to validate that you're a business owner. So if they even get to your website, they're not ready to buy. And so what you should do is you should have a way to capture their email address or their contact information so you can continue the conversation once they hop off your website, right? Traffic, traffic, like traffic, zoom, 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 traffic. So traffic strategy, that's what you need, is a traffic strategy, which means how are you going to get people to your site, right? How are you going to get people to see your site? Because just because you build it doesn't mean that traffic will instantly appear. You have to have a strategy to get them there. You have to draw them in there. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can do it through paid advertising, right? But I would never suggest that you drive traffic to just your website homepage generic strategy. No, I would never recommend that. Or you can have SEO, which are keywords in your website that will allow your site to be discovered. But most of you don't even invest in that. You just, you, you focus on the prettiness of the site. You have no, no SEO strategy, you have no traffic strategy. And that's what happens is you're going to have spent all this great money on a site and no one's gonna see it. Nobody's going to come to it. You know, I will have, I have had so many people tell me that they built a site and, and one, they don't even know how to use Google analytics to even to determine what traffic is hitting their site. Right. That's the problem, right? This website stuff, it's technically boring crap, right? I mean, really it is, but that's what you need to do. So it's not really the aesthetics. You guys are worried about the wrong thing when it comes to your site. You're worried about how it looks, right? But you're not worried about how people will get there. Frankly, I would rather you have a black and white site that only has your contact information that says fill in the blank travel agency. Give me your, you know, site coming. Give me your email address. So as soon as it's available, I'll, you know, email you or something crazy like that, right? I would rather you have that than this really pretty strategy, you know, beautiful site with all these beautiful pictures and no way of anyone ever seeing it, right? And so that's what happens. You build a site, you spend all this money on the site, getting all these graphics done, you get you, you get, get yourself all dolled up, you got all these great makeup on, and you and don't get me wrong, I've done it. I've done that before. I have built a site, I've built it myself, I paid people to build it, and I've done all this work and nobody sees my site. 
right? So just because you have a website doesn't mean you have a marketing strategy. And just because you have a website doesn't mean that people will come unless you have the whole package. So whoever is building your site, you need to ask them. And if you purchase the site and it didn't come with CEO, go back to that guy or gal and ask them, can you CEO my site so it can be discoverable by people that are in my niche area so when they type in fill in the blank keyword, it's going to pop up, right? That's the more important thing when it comes to your site, right? Can you, can you say keyword? Keywords when it comes to a site is the most important thing that you can do for your site. Probably even more important than graphics. And I'm a graphic queen, right? So I'll tell you all day graphics are the thing that, you know, video and graphics, if you got those, right? A couple of words, right? That's really important. But it's really not that important. It's really, can your site be found, right? What did I say? Did I say C-O-E? <laughs> Maybe I said C-O, but it is S. I said C-E-O, S-E-O, S-E-O, which is uh, search engine optimization is what that stands for. And it allows, so keywords are on your site. It's optimized. Search engines can discover pages and information on your site so that it will show up in the results. That's really all SEO is. So the reality is if you have a website, you don't have SEO with it, then you've got a site that's not going to be discovered. If you don't have an ad strategy or a marketing strategy to get people in front of your website, your website is really not going to do much for you, right? So sorry to bust that bubble. So what should you do instead, right? So this is what you should do instead, and this is what you should be working on instead. I'm going to give you this thing that I say often, which is right offer at the right time to the right customer equals money. What does that mean? It means that if you're going to build a site, it needs to be around an offer that you've already identified there's a customer for and that you're giving it to them in the right part of the relationship stage. So let's talk about what all that means, right? All that means is you guys are so anxious for the moolah you are selling to strangers. And it is an expensive endeavor to sell to strangers. I say this pretty much every week when I come here. Stop trying to sell to strangers and be disappointed that you're not getting results. They don't know you, they don't like you, and they don't trust you. It is not that they can't know or like or trust you, but they don't. So for you to be selling packages, $2,000, $3,000 packages, hell, even $700 packages to complete strangers that don't know you and then be like, you know, I posted my package or I have it on my website and nobody's buying. Well, why were they? Who are you? What are you? What are you doing? Like, nobody knows that you and the package and what do you, what do you got going? And now you got COVID on top of it. Why would they pick you? Right? Again, it's your responsibility to tell them your unique selling proposition. Why someone would pick you over, you know, competitor A, B, or C. But the reality is, is your website, forget all that, right? I just want you to throw that out the window because what I really want you to do is I want you to work on an offer. I want you to work on a stranger offer, right? An offer, I'd rather you have one page that offers up a guide or a tip sheet or some type of stranger offer, a video, you know, a video how-to, a video, you know, showing the particular destination that that's all you sell. I'd rather you do that, spend your effort there, than spend it on this glorified website that's going to be sitting there, not doing anything for you, right? I'd rather you build out a landing page with your stranger offer and then drive traffic to that offer, collect email addresses and start a relationship. That's what I'd really rather you do, right? So the truth is your website, not so much important, but your stranger offer, very important because it's going to be the right offer to the right person to meet that particular need for you, right? Can you guys say that right offer at the right time to the right person, right? So often you've got these wrong offers to the right people at the wrong time or right time, wrong offer, you know, right people, right? It's not the perfect storm and mix and perfect recipe for sales, right? So you are nine times out of 10, People are saying, what I need is more customers. I need more clients. I need a way to get to them. I need to get in front of them. I need to know how, where are they at? You need to tell me. And, and Sunday, you need to tell me. So what I want you to do is tell me how to get in front of the customers. And the first thing is stop working on a website. Second thing, get a stranger offer and start marketing to your audience with that stranger offer, period, and story. All right. Another way to do that is if you're going to build a website, I'd rather you work on a blog, right? Drive traffic to your blog topics, right? 
I'd rather you do that, right? Run traffic to blog at pages, right? Every single day and then capture their email address, right? That would be a better strategy than this some generic website that you don't have a strategy for, right? Right, because blogs are words, right? There's some words probably hopefully gonna be in there that are searchable for somebody, but you need to SEO your blog too, right? So again, website is not equal marketing. It is a type of marketing. It is a good thing to have long term but it's certainly not necessary to open your business it's not certainly not necessary to reopen it's not going to sell stuff for you your blog your blog page your blog your website is not going to sell for you unless you drive traffic and unless you're driving into specific offers to the right customer right and maybe to customers that already know you so retargeting would work right but stranger traffic to a website and you're selling just packages, not so much, right? That works for people that know you, right? I would build a website if I already had this large list of emails and, you know, I was about to drop some packages. I have a website dedicated to that package that I was about to drop. I'd be sending email marketing to my large list. And that's the way I would be doing that. I don't want you spending all this effort and time right now, particularly when you're not profitable and you're not making money on something that isn't going to make you money. A website in and of itself will not make you money. It will not bring people to your business unless of course you are spending money to get those people to your website. That's the only way people are gonna to get to your website is if you are driving traffic to your website. Now you can hopefully get organic traffic, but again, you have to do some work in order to get organic traffic, all right? So paid traffic or organic traffic, but if you get organic traffic, you gotta have done some work, pre-work in order to get that organic traffic. All right, so that's like, you know, I don't know, lie number one is your website is the bomb.com. No, not so much. It is the bomb.com when you're making money and you got a lot of traffic out there and they're all looking for you, right? They're all looking for your, your, your travel agency because you're out there on YouTube, you're on Pinterest, you're everywhere, and people want to validate who you are, then they'll probably find you, right? Because you've got your website linked in Pinterest, you got it here, you got it there. And so all these different places are coming and they'll come to your website to get information. That may happen, but if your brand's thinking new right out the gate, or you're not making money and you've been in the gate for a while, your website's not the most important thing that you need to work on, all right? Number two lie, right? Because a lot of people have been telling me this over the last couple of weeks is getting an LLC is all I need to protect myself and my agency. And in the COVID world, I would tell you, no, it is not, right? It is not. That is a lie to you and everyone else around you. So let me tell you what the truth, truth is, is that you have the right insurance. You have the right terms and conditions. You have the right contracts. Those are the things that are going to minimize your risk of litigation, right? It doesn't necessarily guarantee that you won't get sued, but they will minimize your risk of actually having a successful lawsuit against you, right? So having an LLC alone is not the only thing that you need in your business, right? So a lot of people are like, I've heard I need to get an LLC, girl. I got my LLC. It's so funny to me because it's not funny because you don't know, so I shouldn't laugh, but I'm going to tell you this really. I've got so many people telling me, Cindy, you don't need to tell me I'm good to go. I got my LLC. I'm like, all right, let me not tell you because you just said not to tell you. But the reality is, is you're not ready. You got a business and you don't have insurance. You believe the lie that your host agency told you that says that you will be 100% covered in the event that you were sued, right? Because you sent somebody on a trip and they got their leg broken, right? And you don't have coverage. You may or may not be covered, but wouldn't it be great to know that you had insurance and you are covered? and that you're not going to get sued and you've got a personal representation by your insurance company, wouldn't it be better to know that, right? You're a business. This is not this is not some shim sham business we're running here, ladies and gentlemen. We are running a real business. That means that you need to have commercial insurance. Don't believe the hype. If you've got your LLC and you don't have insurance in your LLC's name, you are a risky business. You're running a risky business. So you're not ready to open your business if you got an LLC and no commercial insurance. And I guarantee you, if you have commercial insurance, no commercial insurance is going to accept you without terms and conditions. An insurance company is not going to accept you if you don't have the right terms and conditions. So that means you need to have terms and conditions. You need to have contracts. These are things that you need to have in your business. You know, what is, let me, let me ask you this. And so I don't mean to be trite and I don't mean to be condescending, 
But the reality is, is just because you're a beginner and you sell to somebody, right? Do you think that that's going to be the case that happens to you in court and that you're going to be able to say I was a beginner? Do you think that that's going to fly in court? Right. Who's going to represent you? Right. Because your insurance agency represents you in the event that you get some litigation. Right. No, they're not going to care. Right. Larissa, they're not going to care that you're a beginner. Right. I mean, have you ever heard of. I don't remember. I don't remember if it was driver's ed or driver something. Right. Just because you don't know the law doesn't mean that the law is not applicable to you. Right. Just because you're a beginner doesn't mean that someone isn't going to sue you if something happens. Right. And you're exposed. And now you, they're after you and your personal assets. Right. An LLC will protect you from that, but it won't protect you from commercial insurance is what you need in that situation. So my point is, is don't say I'm a beginner and therefore I don't need you're in business. Therefore, you need. Right. So if you are in business and you have been operating prior to COVID and now you're in downtime, and now you're sitting on this live listening to me. Now you know. Don't say you didn't know. I never heard that before. I'm telling you, errors and omissions insurance, I don't care what host agency you are with, unless you are part owner of that host agency, you need your own errors and omissions, right? Beginner or not, right? It's not that expensive. So I want to tell you that I erroneously thought that too, right? When I first started and I erroneously thought, oh my God, errors and omission um, insurance is going to be like thousands and thousands of dollars. And it really wasn't. And it isn't. So go and get you some right now. Like don't open up your business, particularly in a COVID situation and not be insured, right? The, the likelihood of people having some experience or you omitting something. I mean, that's the whole reason for the insurance. In any other time in the history of time, this is a time for all businesses to have errors and emissions insurance when it comes to the travel business, right? Because what if you forget to say something? What if you just don't and they get pissed off and they sue you and they, you know, again, getting sued doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means that somebody believes that you they have a case to make against you. It doesn't mean that you're wrong or you did anything wrong, but it just means that they have a case. They believe they have a case against you, right? So the reality is, is insurance protects you from those people that think that they have a case or the fact that you as an insurer, as a travel professional, you made a recommendation and you forgot something that you should have told them, right? And you get sued. It's not unlike, it's not improbable. I don't want you to think, oh, you know, before COVID, I would have said, it's probably not likely you could, you know, I, I would have still told you to get insurance, but I would have said, it's probably not likely you're going to get sued, right? I feel like uh, <laughs> one of those comedians is like, it's not likely you're going to get sued, right? But it is, you could get sued. And you know why, right? People are, you know how many lawsuits are going to happen, right? Or are or, or in process right now due to COVID and people who still went on trips in March, um, during when after the COVID was announced and, you know, cruise lines, travel agents, you know, just all you name it, the gamut. Right. That's what I'm saying. But who would have predicted that? Right. You booked that trip 12 months ago. Right. And now COVID happens and now you're out, your ass out. I mean, I, I'm sorry to say that, but your ass out and you didn't know and you get sued. Don't cut corners. This is your business. This is not this is not for play play. Right. This is not for we're not playing here. We're not, we're not, we don't have like big businesses here. We don't have side hustles here. You guys may be doing this as a side hustle. We'll stop doing that. Right. Okay. Let me, let me rephrase this. If you're doing this as a side hustle, don't call me and ask for help because I don't do side hustles. I do businesses. I'm trying to get you real businesses that are going to make you real money. Right. So I believe in side hustles. Don't get me wrong. I'm 47. I've been hustling all my life. But I'm telling you, they've never been on the side. They've been my primary hustle and they've always been legit businesses. And that is what you should have. So don't tell me you're ready to open. You get an LLC, but you have no commercial insurance. You don't have any terms and conditions. You don't have any contracts in place. Or you've got something that you scraped off the internet and you're hoping that it applies, right? Travel specific. We're professionals here. That's what we need to start acting like, right? So number two lie is LLC is all you need because that's not the truth. You need more than that. All right. Number three, you guys ready for number three? Right. Number three, if you're ready for number three, because this one is like the big one for me. Like this one is the one that everybody keeps telling me like, yeah, girl, I'm ready. I've been doing this and I'm good Sunday. I don't need nothing else. I'm good. 
you know, I've been really doing my homework and I've got everything ready to go and I've been doing number three and that's all I need Sunday. So you just give me a little advice about how to attract clients and I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm only one can only, right? All right. You guys ready for number three? All right. Number three thing that people tell me that makes them ready for reopening is I've been taking travel supplier training. I just want that to sink in because you guys have all told me that you've been taking travel supplier training. I've been, you know, I've been, I've been taking some training and I'm ready to go. And so now that I'm ready to go, I'm ready to reopen and I'm ready to make this money. I didn't have time to take all the supplier training. So as a result of that, I wasn't ready to go, but now I'm ready to go because I take fill in the blank, certification, travel supplier training, and I'm ready to go. And don't get me wrong, I love travel supplier training. But I'm gonna ask you, when is the last time somebody asked you how many square foot is on a ship? Probably never, right? There's a lot of supplier training and it's valuable, but it's really focused on the wrong thing. I want supplier training that's gonna teach you how to sell it better not tell you the 50,000 features that nobody really gives a shit about, right? But, you know, I sat through last year cruise training for one of the cruise lines. I'm not going to call them out because the training is all the same, right? It's all about every ship and every feature and every restaurant and every fill-in-the-blank feature that isn't going to help you sell any better, right? Knowing how big the size of the ship isn't going to make you sell any better. Knowing all of these ancillary features aren't going to make you sell any better. What's going to make you sell better is knowing who your client is. That's what's going to make you sell better. So that's the truth. So the lie is that supply tra- supplier training for the most part in and of itself will make you a better salesperson. No, what will make you a better salesperson is knowing your ideal, uh, your, your audience knowing and understanding what their needs are, knowing and understanding what they need, what they like, what they want out of their trip and marrying that with features from a supplier. But most of you don't even know what your clients like, don't even know what they want, let alone if the supplier will match it, right? So you are taking all of the supplier training so that you can make yourself feel good and that, you know, cover yourself in all these certifications and put them on the wall, but that is not going to make you sell any better. And if any stretch of the imagination, you're sitting on this live thinking that your job is not a salesperson, you're in the wrong business. You are a salesperson, period, end of story. And so the best thing that you can do is study your client. It's the best thing that you can do is know your audience. The best thing that you can do is understand what makes them tick up here. Right. And if you don't know your audience, it's because you probably don't have a niche. Right. You're generally selling travel and you're hoping stuff will stick to the wall. Right. I must have just like in the last two weeks that I got off the phone with many people who have told me how much supplier training that they want. And, that, you know, the 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 sarcastic Sunday wants to reply, well, like, how is that doing for you? Like what? You know, what I'd rather you tell me is that you're taking like, you know, sales one on one training. You're like, you know, you're. You're taking training that doesn't make you feel sleazy when you're selling, right? That kind of training. Then telling me that you're taking a bunch of supplier training. And again, I'm not trying to say that supplier training is not important, right? You know, we had uh, one of the river crews, uh, 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 Ama Waterways come. And, you know, she talked about all the features of the, the, the cruises that they had, you know, and it wasn't boring. It was very interesting. It was very insightful, right? But it was really from the perspective of customer needs. So like I can seriously relate my customer's needs to the features on the ship. That is the way that she explained it. But 90% of the tra- the training that's out there isn't like that. Most of it, it's like, it, it, and not only that, they test you on like stupid shit. Like we're never going to remember, like who's going to remember, you know, that there's 15 hotels, you know, there's 15 steakhouses and two Mexican restaurants and an Asian cuisine and, Who's going to remember that? Because what are you going to do? If I'm selling that cruise line, and I'm picking on the cruise because I had a hell of a time passing one of somebody's cruise masters. I can't remember. I think it was Royal Caribbean. I just called it out. But it was Royal Caribbean. I tried to pass that damn thing like 60 times and I couldn't do it. And I had to do it right before my uh, seminar at sea. And I'm like trying to retake the thing. And I'm like, who's going to remember all this? Like, why do I need it? 
Because if I'm selling Royal Caribbean or any cruise line, right, what am I going to do? I'm going to have the fact sheet right next to me. Who needs to memorize all of that? Did that help me become a better salesperson? You know what helped me become a better salesperson? Sitting through the two days seminar at Sea Training where they really talked about what's going on with the ship and things that I need to know so that I can bring that back to my customer. But the training that they had that I did on my own, that didn't really help me. What helped me was the, the insider information that the BDM gave me at that training in terms of like, if you book this type of uh, class of, you know, this type of class, you automatically get these upgrades, right? That's the kind of stuff that's going to help me sell, right? But 90% of the training that you got there, unless you're really directly working with your BDM, isn't going to help you sell. What you need is sales training. You guys need to become better salespeople. That's what you need. You need better sales, sales, uh, salesmanship. You need better to know who it is that you're selling to. You need niches. You need spe <laughs> specificity. <laughs> I always laugh because I have the hardest time saying that word. Specificity. I'm going to have to like, get a phonetic uh, pronunciation of that word. But you need to specialize in something. That's what I'm trying to say. You guys get what I'm trying to say. You need to specialize in something, right? And that, based on that specialty, that you can know who your client is. And based on who your client is, and you can get inside of their head. What do they like? What do they What do they don't like? What are they looking for? What are the experiences that they're after, right? I know my client. Do you know your client? I know what you guys need. You guys are my clients. Do you guys know your clients? Right? The best thing that you can do is know your client better than they know themselves. If you know your client better than they know themselves, you will always sell. Because that means you can anticipate what they need. You can anticipate what they're thinking. You can anticipate what what whatever their problems are, right? You can relate to them at a level that no one else can. That is the type of salesperson. That is the type of business that you want. You want your clients, when they have experienced any interaction with your business, be like, man, I feel like she knows me. I just met her. Right? That's what you want. That's what you want. Travel supplier training isn't going to get there. So, you know, I think it's valuable, just like I think a website is valuable. So don't go, don't get off this live going to your BDM saying, you know, I was sitting on this live and this coach said that travel supplier training isn't valuable. That's not what I said. What I said is that it's not going to make you sell better, that it's not going to be the path to make you sell better. What's going to make you sell better is knowing who your client is and know your client almost better than they know themselves. If you do that, right, is the key, because then you can narrow down who your client is. If you know that, then when you talk to them in your marketing, when you talk to them in person, when you talk to them or about them and they hear it, they're like, oh my goodness, it's like she's talking to me, right? And that's what you want. You want your clients, your prospective clients to think that you opened up a chapter in their life and are speaking directly to them. And the only way that you do that is to study them and to know them, right? It's to study them and to know them, right? Read all about them. What makes, what makes them tick? What, what are they struggling with? What are they happy with? What do they want more of? Do you know that? If you don't know that and you're focused on money, that means you're focused on you. So like I said that there are three things that you should focus on, right? You should focus on you. You should focus on them and you should focus on us. Right. So I still mean that. I mean that in every part of your business, you should focus on you in terms of your specialization. You should focus on them in terms of your vendors, your suppliers and your clients. What is it about them that you like or that you need to know about? And then you should focus on us building relationships with them. Right. That's what you need to do. Right. And if you don't have any of these things locked down, I would argue to say that you're not ready to go. But there's still time because travel is really not open. I don't care what these five emails told me. The reality is travel is open to some, but it's not fully open. Right. So the floodgates have not opened and you still have time to work on your business. You still have time to get these things right. Right. You still have time to work on you. Right. You still have time to work on them and you still have time to work on us. Right. So you still have this time. So don't waste it. Right. Many of you guys are working on the wrong things. You're working on the things that make your heart feel good. Right. And what do I mean by heart feel good things? Right. It feels good to have this website that is a representation of your business. Don't get me wrong because I love websites. I love 
I love the what you know, I love when they're done. I love like, you know, I love working with my graphic artists on them. I love the imagery of them. I love the mechanics of them. I like to put features on them. I like all that is websites, right? It makes me feel good, right? It makes me feel good because I work on this work of art and then I get to reveal it. And I'd be like, whoa, see, look, I got my website. I got my website, right? And everybody's like, you need a website, you need a website. So when you do and you work on that thing, it makes you feel good on the inside, but it's not an activity that's going to make you money, right? So let's not work on things that make us feel good. Let's work on things that will make us money, right? So what did I say you should be working on instead? You should be working on a traffic strategy, right? And that shit is hard. So you don't want to work on that. So you don't want to work on something that makes you feel uncomfortable and that you don't know about and that is foreign to you, right? So you shy away from those things. But I'm saying if you really want to turn your business around, then work in the areas of uncomfort, right? Don't work on things that make you feel good. Doing travel supplier training and putting those certificates on the wall. I am a total type A personality, right? So I like list only so that I can cross things off, right? That is the like the, the nature of a type A person. I like to make lists just so that I can cross things off and I can look at all the things that I crossed off. So taking supplier training is one of those things, right? I get these certificates, I get to plaster them, I get to post them, and it makes me feel good, right? But like doing something that doesn't make me feel good, which is like discovery calls, sales calls, those make me feel uncomfortable. Learning how to be better at that, that's uncomfort, right? So I don't want to immerse myself in things that make me uncomfortable. I want to do things that make me comfortable. And those things that make me comfortable don't make you money. So get into the things that you need to do to make you money in this business, right? So I'm not going to sit here every week and I'm going to pump you full of bullshit that tells you, oh, you can do this and you can do that and you'll make money right No, You need to get uncomfortable. That is the message for today. You are not ready to open. If you haven't been uncomfortable the last couple of months working on shit that you just don't know anything about, right? The students in my program are uncomfortable working on areas of their business that they're like, oh, my armpits are sweaty and they're itchy. Like, cause I'm uncomfortable. I want you to be uncomfortable so that when it comes time for the floodgates to open, you're like, oh my God, I did that uncomfortable work so I can focus on the thing that I love, selling, travel, making amazing experiences to these flood of new customers that are before me because I did the work. I did the uncomfortable thing. I set aside the things that were that were easy, right? That made me feel good. I set those things aside and worked on the hard things. That is the message today. Work on the things that are really going to get you the end result and stop working on comfort things. Website is a comfort thing, right? Getting an LLC, it's necessary. It's necessary, but that's not comfortable, right? Talking about litigation and what can happen if shit goes wrong in your business, that's uncomfortable, right? Having that insurance, I mean, that insurance conversation I had with my insurance agent last year, that was an uncomfortable conversation. I was like, oh my God, I hadn't thought about that. I hadn't thought about that. I hadn't thought about that. Well, I guess I need, to, I need that, you know, I need to let that, right? You know, filling out that application, although not difficult, but it made me think about things that I hadn't thought about in my business. That's where I want you, right? Terms and conditions, that's not sexy, right? That's not sexy stuff, right? Writing terms and conditions and figuring out what you got to put in and what you got to cover and what you do and what you don't do. You got that stuff's not fun, right? But you need it, right? That's the stuff that's going to keep you covered, right? So I want you to make money and I want you to protect the money that you make, right? That's it. That's the essential message out of the three items, right? Is make more money by doing the things that are going to get you more money and then protect the money that you have by making sure that you've mitigated your risk exposure in your business, right? Okay, so that's my message for today. So I'm going to ask you this one simple question, right? If you want to be uncomfortable working on those things, but you want a guy to do it, reach out to me. I want you to say, I am ready. And I will reach out to you this week and I will set up a call and we'll talk about if you really are ready to open up your business and what I can do to help you. Right. So if you're ready to be uncomfortable, because nothing I do or teach is comfortable. Right. I mean, there's some fun. I think we have fun. I, I, I would hope that we have fun. Right. I feel like we're having fun, but it's not comfortable stuff. We're not peeling back uncomfortable, you know, comfortable things. I'm not having you go sign up with a bunch of travel agencies. I'm not having you work on your website. You know, I'll give you some tips on what to do, but that's not our focus right now. Our focus is on those activities that are going to be more clients, 
those activities that are going to set you up for success long term. And those things are not sexy all of the time, right? So we're going to be working on all the non-sexy stuff, but critical things to get you set up for success. All right. So right, I'm ready. I'll reach out to you. I need you to check your messages. If you want me to reach out, I'm going to uh, send you a message via Facebook Messenger. And if we are not friends, I will friend you so that I can get that message through. But check your message request. If you write, I'm ready. And for those that have joined me and you have joined me and this is your first time, I am so glad that you are here. Thank you for joining me live. I will be back here next Wednesday. And for my regular people that keep showing up every single Wednesday, thank you again. I'm so glad that you are here and you are a part of our community. I am Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. I'll be back here next Wednesday talking all things launching, marketing, and operating. And until then, I will talk to you then. You guys have a wonderful evening. Talk to you soon. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.